Hello, I'm Rajesh Merchandani, and thanks for joining me for this edition of the CGD podcast. Today, we're going to be bringing you up to date on a project that we first talked about several months ago. It's the question of how to beat the resource curse. Now, nearly every African country is thinking right about now about how to exploit natural resources in their territory uh, and what they might do with the money that could yield. Tanzania is sitting on natural gas deposits that could alter the course of its development. And we've been running a project that for the first time asks ordinary Tanzanians what they think their country's priorities should be for that money if and when it comes on stream. Justin Sandifer and Mujobo Moyo are the lead researchers for CGD and Justin joins me here in the studio to give us an update on the project. But first, Justin, before you reveal some of the results of your findings, let's recap what this project entailed. Right, so back in the beginning of 2015, we decided to ask Tanzanians what they thought Tanzania should do with this big natural gas discovery. Uh, potentially a lot of money coming on board. The government's gonna get in an optimistic scenario, as much revenue as the average Tanzanian household earns per annum every year from natural gas. So it could be a lot of money. What do Tanzanians think ought to be done with that? We decided to conduct a nationwide poll. We took a nationally representative sample of 2,000 Tanzanians. We sent teams out around the country, through the countryside, to villages and towns and knocking on doors and asked people, should the gas be extracted at all? Should it be left in the ground? Should it be sold internationally? Should you subsidize fuel? Should you spend it on health and education or on roads? And who should be in charge of these decisions? Uh, and collated all the answers. Tanzania is roughly 80% rural, and so our sample reflects that. There's some people in Dar es Salaam and other major cities, but most of our sample are going to be rural, you know, relatively poor people. So from that sample of 2,000, then what did you do? OK, so you know, this is not new. and you know. Civil society organizations in Dar, like Twaweza, have been doing national polling, uh, mobile phone polling in particular, and asking people about lots of things, including about the natural gas. So that's not new. Uh, but what we wanted to do was take another step and say, look, a lot of Tanzanians don't know anything about the natural gas. In fact, when you ask that question point blank, what have you heard about the natural gas discovery? The most common answer is nothing. Big news for the economy, most people don't know anything about it. So we wanted to go to the next step and actually educate people and give people a chance to process this information, think and talk and debate, deliberate, as political scientists would say, about the natural gas and the natural gas policy options, and then see what they would want to do with the natural gas resources. So this is where we get the term deliberative polling, which is what you want to do. You poll people first, then you inform them of the choices, and then you poll them again. So the polling again took place in this, you know, what I've described to you before as this, this crazy festival in Dar es Salaam. Tell us about this. Right. So yes, yeah, so this concept of deliberative polling, and this comes from uh, somebody who's collaborated with us on the project. His name is Jim Fishkin. He's a professor at Stanford who's done similar setups on different topics in different countries. Um, this idea of polling people, giving them information, letting them debate, and then coming back and asking them again. The difficult part is the bringing people together to let them debate and process the information. We had a nationally representative sample spread out over a huge country. So we took 400 people of our original 2,000 respondents, randomly selected, so from villages all over the country, and in a huge logistical chaotic effort, brought them in buses all to Dar es Salaam for a two-day extravaganza of debating natural gas policy. Uh, we had them in a you know, hotel ballroom, essentially, in a relatively modest uh, hotel on the outskirts of Dar es Salaam. And so these 400 people, many of whom had you know, never been in a hotel before, or certainly never debated policy issues before, um, were broken up into small groups and they kind of went at it. We posed specific questions. Should the gas be extracted? Should it be sold? They had a briefing video to kind of introduce them to the topic and a moderator to help them along. And, and they spent you know, these two hour sessions really arguing with one another about what should Tanzania do with this money. And they really got into it as well, didn't they? They really did. The discussions got quite heated and it was really nice to see people really processing the issues, really forming opinions. And you know, a, a representative cross section of the country, from you know, young women nursing as they talked to you know, old men who just made it on the bus, um, all speaking up and taking part in the discussion. And then you got more results out of that exercise, 
And that is what you're letting us know now. So the results of this deliberative polling exercise, what did you find? So people went home at the end of two days of processing all these issues. They went home, went back to their villages, back to their towns. Um, and we did the follow-up surveying by phone. Called back all 2,000 people. The 400 people who'd come to Dar es Salaam and the other people who had not participated at all to ask them what do they think now. Um, and, you know, really interesting results across a range of issues. People, I think, to summarize it very briefly, people are uh, eager to see the natural gas extracted. They are eager to see it sold. They are eager to see that money used to spend on social service programs. Uh, and they are surprisingly supportive of transparency and oversight that the government, this has been a, a topic in the news in Tanzania in recent months, that all of these contracts between the government and, and oil companies should be published, put in the public domain, that there should be some independent oversight of the process. Um, one of the, I think, concerns when you talk to many economists about polling the public on something like natural gas is that there's going to be this populist tendency that people just want to extract it, get the money, spend quickly, not save anything, maybe subsidize fuel, do things that are um, have questionable economic rationale or are going to be kind of imprudent over the long term. We questionable do, ex economic rationale for economists, for although economists. perhaps not for mm. citizens. Exactly. Um, and we do see some of that on the polling. Like I said, people are eager to see the, the gas extracted, sold, and spent. You know, when you ask people point blank, should the money be spent now or saved for the future, people lean towards spend it now. So we do, they don't want a Tanzanian sovereign wealth fund? They're, they're interested in seeing this spent on health and education in the short term. What about payments to themselves like they do in Alaska with Alaskan oil dividends? So this has been a long-standing interest for, for the Center for Global Development, the idea of trying to overcome some of the governance failures of the resource curse by giving money directly to citizens, letting them decide how it's used. If the government needs revenue, it can tax back that money. Um, people are overwhelmingly supportive of the idea of direct distribution of natural gas revenues when you ask them in principle, do you like the idea of cash transfers? to the poor, to the needy, and so on, yes, yes, strong support. When you put a point-blank trade-off to people, would you support cash transfers to households or spending this on government programs, a narrow majority is gonna choose spending on government programs. And what was interesting for us is that when you put people together to debate and process the issues, those 400 people who came to Dar es Salaam to really think this through, they moved more in the direction of spending this money on government programs. A lot more? Yeah, to a statistically significant margin, it, it was a meaningful change, not a huge swing, but there was already a majority, remember, in favor of spending on government programs, and the more they deliberated, the more they moved in that direction. So from the point of view of the deliberative polling exercise, what did this tell you about deliberative polling in this instance? Yeah, I mean, I think a, a quick, a really short summary would be that for the most part, deliberation and receiving all this information moved people somewhat closer in line with the economists um, in favor of commercializing and selling the gas and not necessarily subsidizing energy or using it to produce electricity directly uh, in Tanzania um, in favor of independent oversight and transparency measures and so on. Uh, so for the most part, people got what I would call more prudential the more they thought about this. But there's really limits to that. They did not change their mind about saving versus spending. People remain really eager to spend the money, and they remain really in favor of social services, spending programs, as opposed to longer-term investments in infrastructure and roads. So what's your analysis? this what's your reaction to that did you think that they would change their minds more did the priorities that they expressed surprise you or disappoint you um, I didn't have you know strong judgments ahead of time in terms of what I wanted people to say as a result of this so I wouldn't say that anything disappoints me um, it's very good research very good <laughs> there research. you go okay. open-minded well, all the way yeah, um, yeah it's there's, like I said, there's this worry about whether a 
where they're citizens in a, in a democracy like Tanzania, which is a low-income country with a fairly uneducated you know, population, whether ordinary people can really come together and process these issues. Um, and I think the process was, for the most part, really heartening in that respect to see people grappling with the issues. And that's something you kind of, it's hard to get out of the data and the results directly. You kind of have to watch the video and, and see people grappling with the issues to see that people really process the questions. Uh, and then, you know, the fact that there were some meaningful movements in public opinion kind of reflects that same actual grappling with the issues. So it was encouraging in that respect to see, even in such a low income, low literacy environment, people able to wrestle with kinds of complex questions that if you ask many economists, they would say, no, 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 that's something that needs to be kind of under technocratic control and we need to insulate this from too much political interference. Um, I think that's sort of short-sighted. At the end of the day, you know, Tanzania is a democracy and these choices are gonna be governed by, you know, the democratic choices of the Tanzanian electorate. Tanzanian electorate needs to understand these issues and wrestle with them and, and hopefully that will ensure, you know, in the long term, better governance of these resources. And the project's not over. The next phase of it is that you are taking the results of the citizen polling to a group of Tanzanian policymakers. Tell us about that. Right. So many Tanzanian policymakers, without naming names, were, you know, a bit skeptical when we said we're going to go ask ordinary Tanzanians what they think. The reaction was, well, they'll never, they'll never understand. Um, so we've gone and done that. And now we want to come back and, and, show, that they did and show that they did understand, yeah. or at least show what their opinions were. So we're holding an event in Dar es Salaam where we invite the great and the good, um, policymakers, you know, members of parliament, people who work in the ministries, people who work in civil society organizations, even aid donors and embassy staff, to come and hold what's a more typical policy workshop, you know, where experts and very educated people wrestle with these issues. But instead of just discussing the technical merits of different gas policy options, we're going to have that discussion on the technical merits, but then also show people on each of these topics what do ordinary Tanzanians think and what did ordinary Tanzanians come up with, where did they come down, rather, when they wrestled with the same questions? What did they think after they deliberated? Uh, we're going to also take that opportunity, you know, we, you know, never stop researching. We're going to take that opportunity to poll the policymakers so then we can hold up these results next to each other. Here's what ordinary Tanzanians think. Here's what sort of policy elites think. Uh, and here were the movements, you know, one question would be when people get more educated and deliberate, do they move in the direction of their policymakers or in a different direction? So we want to hold up these different results next to each other at the end of the day. How much interest are Tanzanian policymakers taking in this exercise, especially given that there is an election looming? There is a big election and a highly contested election looming um, later this year for uh, president in Tanzania. Uh, and so that, we've got to be careful. We don't want to get, you know, too political with this. Um, there is a lot of interest, I think, among political leaders in this question of natural gas. Obviously, you know, it's potentially transformational for Tanzania's economy. So everybody has a stance. There are members of both government and the various ministries, as well as opposition parties who have been a part of the CGD study group uh, to help oversee and plan the project. So CGD, together with Rapoa, which is a think tank in Dar es Salaam, have brought together this group of both academics, but also these political leaders to discuss these issues. So we've had good buy-in from both the opposition and, and government. Um, lots of interest and lots of, it's been a, a productive and I think fairly healthy debate that hasn't gotten really acrimonious. It's, it's nice to see, actually. Uh, and let's just take it back to kind of say, you know, CGD's core mission, our core principles. What is the learning here? What are the lessons, do you think, for development? Sure. So stepping back, you know, from Tanzania to this broader issue of, I would say the broader issue is low income, you know, democracies that face this stock of natural resource wealth and the prospect of the resource curse, what can they do to capitalize on these extractive you know, resource earnings and avoid this pitfall of governance failures? Um, Tanzania is a really interesting case with a strong and stable democracy with this history of peace, uh, but still governance challenges and still really poor. Uh, it relates, I think, to CGD's mission about global development in that 
you know, a lot of the work and development and a lot of the development agencies we often interact with, like the World Bank or aid agencies, were kind of born out of a mentality that rich countries need to finance development in poor countries. And this is really about financial flows from rich countries to poor countries. But we're in a situation where many poor countries are now sitting on huge stocks of wealth. There's huge finance available within Tanzania now to potentially finance development. So it becomes really less about aid flows and financing from abroad and more a question about how is Tanzania as a democracy going to govern these new resources. And that is the kind of principle that can relate to many other countries facing the same dilemma at the moment. Absolutely. Uganda's in the same situation. Kenya increasingly. Mozambique right next door has natural gas. Ghana's been wrestling with this. It's a, a widespread issue in the region. Okay. Really interesting stuff. Uh, Justin Sandifer, thanks very much for joining us on the CGD podcast. Thanks for having me. Uh, look out on our website for plenty more information and video from these events in Dar es Salaam, uh, www.cgdev.org. And of course, join me, Rajesh Merchandani, for the next edition of the CGD podcast. Mm -hmm.